Well, hello everyone and welcome to our ICF Orange County webinar. Today we have Vanya Kuntz and Alex Pascal and we're gonna do the first session in our coaching technology series. Vanya is actually our past director of programming and I'm gonna say a little bit about her before I hand it over to her. She started her coaching journey about 15 years ago, and at the moment, she works side by side with one of the original pioneers of modern coaching, David Clutterbuck. They focus on educating the market about the benefits of team coaching, as well as supporting coaching to master those skills mm -hmm. and understand the fundamental differences between one-on-one -on -one and team coaching. She's a passionate advocate of implementing technological solutions for successful coaching practice. And this is one of the reasons she started the Coaching and Technology webinar series three years ago. And we're so lucky to have you, Vanya. And I'm gonna let you, Vanya, go ahead and introduce our guest, Alex, today. I'm gonna put, turn my video off, but I will come on again towards the end just to uh, wrap everything up. So Vanya, over to you. Oh, thank you so much, Nahid, and uh, thank you to ICF Orange County for supporting me for second year round. The first year I did this webinar was through ICF Los Angeles. And um, this, this webinar is my most favorite contribution to the coaching community for many reasons, but most importantly, because I know um, the value that technology can bring. And it's clear to me that today, technology can augment our humanity in this period of social distancing and, and really uh, we'll be seeing the impact and the power that we can connect regardlessly of disconnecting in the physical setting. So um, I have Alex with me today and we will go um, around the topic of three top trends in coaching uh, that include technology. Before I hand it to him, I want to invite you to um, tap in the chat box any, um, any thoughts, any intentions, any expectations that you have uh, from us today. What, you, what would you like to learn? What brought you here? And um, we will take questions after he present for about 20 minutes. He will also show us his um, new features and um, new exciting things around um, his platform and um, projects that he has been working on. So uh, after so we will have like 20 minutes of presentations, 20 minutes of uh, question and answering, and about 10 minutes, I will um, kind of wrap it up and ask my top three uh, follow-up questions that I ask all my guests. And we will head out to Nahid and she will uh, close the session. So feel free anytime. Um, please, we want to make it as most interactive as possible and um, answer anything that uh, stays on top of your head now and you want to learn around. Um, I met Alex about in 2017 and uh, ICF Converge in uh, Washington. And I was aware about Coach Logics a year before that when I was researching the market and really want, trying to find what are the technological solutions that they are customized for coaches. And his platform stood out to me because um, I probably uh, demo, um, see the demo of about 12 at that time. There weren't many, but his platform was the best I saw. And um, I'm very happy that he is willing to uh, be my guest and he will tell us all the changes that happened ever since then. Um, and let's see where the conversation is gonna take us. Uh, Alex is a serial entrepreneur and uh, he's an excellent coach with lots of experience. And I'm glad to uh, hand it to him. Alex, how are you doing today? Thank you, Vanya. 
Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm, uh, I'm doing well. I hope everyone's doing well at home. Um, I'm sure, you know, it's an interesting day to have a webinar because it's one of those things we actually should be doing, right? Just meeting online instead of getting together uh, during these um, quite interesting and uh, scary times, definitely. So, but I'm, I'm doing well and it's, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Oh, awesome. Alex, um, would you like to add something around your background and give us more information about Coach Logics? Definitely. Um, so my background is in organizational psychology. I have a PhD in consulting psych um, and I specialize really, my research was in, in coaching, um, looking at, uh, wow, it's every time I think about my dissertation still, it's still too, too traumatizing to think too much about still after years after finished it, <laughs> I finished it. Um, and I was running coach launching because I was kind of finishing my dissertation too. So that was, that was kind of fun. Um, but I really, I got it done. So I, I my research was on looking at uh, managerial coaching behavior. So manager as coach and looking at how um, the use of managerial coaching behaviors impacts uh, employee engagement. So that's kind of what I did my dissertation on. Um, but I used to work at the Center for Creative Leadership and I held a number of different roles there. I was a coaching project manager, then a, a global product manager for coaching and assessments. And, um, and then I also uh, was a coach at CCL for a number of years. I still do some coaching with them. I do very little coaching these days. Uh, I've probably done a couple probably two or 300 coaching engagements um, over the last 10 years, but now I only have really one active coaching, executive coaching client, uh, since I'm busy with, with Coach Logics. Um, I'm, I'm based in San Diego, um, and so not too far from Orange County, so I think it's, it used, there used to be no chapter in San Diego, actually, so the Orange County chapter was kind of almost like the San Diego chapter, uh, but now I think for about two years or so, there's been a chapter here here in San Diego. Um, I've also been involved with the ICF Global, uh, Magda, Joel, uh, Mark, all those great guys over there doing great work. Um, so it's always a pleasure to be part of, of anything related to the ICF. Um, in terms of Coach Logic, so I, I started the company in 2012, which I used to say it seems like a lifetime ago, but now it almost is like a lifetime ago, right? It's like eight <laughs> years. <laughs> um, so the idea, I know it's crazy. The idea is it was to, really create a, a true platform for, for coaching. So when I looked at the space kind of from the vantage point of working internally at CCL, I understood, well, you know, in the case of CCL, they're not a technology company, right? So they mm -hmm. need to develop technology to manage that growing coaching practice. Um, and, but companies uh, like CCL and all these large global consultancies or the smaller boutique shops or the enterprises consuming coaching, they're really not technology companies. So when they try to create technology solutions to solve the pain point around managing coaching, um, it creates problems for efficiency across the industry because you have this whole layer of independent coaches uh, that do coaching for themselves. They might do coaching through a couple of coaching vendors. Uh, I know not everyone in the, in, uh, in, that's attending here today kind of does coaching with organizations. Some people are more kind of personal coaches, perhaps health coaches, kind of like a broad spectrum, not just organizational kind of leadership coaches. My, my expertise is really around leadership coaching. So I kind of use that as a frame for reference. And I find that a lot of people want to actually tap into the enterprise, which is interesting. So kind of learning more about it, even if you're not currently doing it, is powerful. And I do think that as coaching continues to evolve, you'll see the use of coach of broader sets of coaching within organizations. I think that's a really exciting development to be able to use kind of broader topics that are covered in coaching that traditionally coaching has kind of covered in organizational settings. And we'll talk about that. I think technology is instrumental to be able to accomplish that. Um, but going back to kind of like the vision for Coach Logics was really to build a platform that would enable anyone um, in, in the space, whether you're a coach, a coaching company of any size, or an enterprise to manage coaching in one integrated platform. An integrated platform has many advantages. If you're one coach and you're working with three different coaching vendors and they're all using a plat the same platform, you can have one profile with all your information, all your sessions, all your clients. 
but obviously building something like that is quite complex uh, since there's a ton of different roles, permissions. Uh, think about it, you know, you're, you're an enterprise administrator of a coaching practice. You invite the coach that's external. So you're kind of managing external vendors, but you might also have internal coaches. You might have different administrators. And then you need to build a platform that basically manages all those roles, all those permissions from external folks, internal folks. And then you kind of get into, you know, the feature set. So you need scheduling, you need notes, you need to share documents, you need to do video conferencing sessions, you need chat. So it starts really expanding to become these massive undertakings. So it really took us a long time at Coach Logics to get it uh, right. You know, we've gone through a couple iterations of the platform. Uh, over the last couple of years, um, we've done really good work with the technology. This year, we're launching some incredible things that, that we'll, we'll talk about in a little bit. I always like to take the perspective of kind of like just neutrality, in, you know, just tell you about what we're doing in the context of what's important for coaching and, and, and technology, not just do like a promo of what we do. But, you know, it is kind of like my life's work and I do have a PhD in organizational psychology. So I really care about this space. Uh, so when you hear me talk about Coach Logics today, I'm sure there's other solutions out there that do great things. Uh, in, in some cases, I'll mention some as well. Um, but, you know, it's also interesting to just talk about the journey of building really a, what I think is one of the only kind of true coaching platforms out there. Absolutely. And I know that our conversation may take different, direct, like many different directions. And I want to invite one more time people that they're on a call to type in a chat box. What would be the most valuable for you to take away from this conversation around what are the, co uh, the, the coaching trends in relation to technology? Um, because we will probably not meet your expectations if we don't know what they are. So please type in the chat box. Um, we have one answer so far. Latest software tools for facilitating coaching. Um, one thing I want to kind of give you opportunity to distinguish how your platform stands out uh, versus all of these platforms like, um, like Better App, like Sounding Board that they are the Uber in coaching industry. So um, tell me about that. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, as, as I actually have some interesting kind of charts that I'll show as I'm going through that portion when I'm actually showing you some slides. <clears throat> the key differentiator is we don't sell coaching, right? So we don't, we are a neutral platform that enables coaching to be managed more efficiently. So we work with coaches, coaching companies and enterprises. We've actually received invest, an uh, investment from two pretty large scale coaching companies. One of them is DDI, uh, you know, large global consulting firm, probably one of the top and most well-regarded yeah. leadership development firms in the world. Um, they have a venture fund. They invested in our company last year. Uh, we've also received an investment from a large um, coaching company in Australia called the Stevenson Mansell Group. So we work with coaches, coaching companies, enterprises. We're neutral. We don't actually sell coaching services. We provide the technology so you can manage all the scheduling, the goal planning, the notes across the spectrum of your coaching practice, but we don't actually sell the service. So when you think about a company like BetterUp, they have similar technology in, in, the, in the way that, you know, they're enabling the coaching relationships to, you know, you can do your scheduling, look at content, all that. But what they primarily do is they aggregate a number of, you know, a thousand plus coaches that then they sell those, the services for, from those coaches to enterprises. So they package it. So they're, you know, they, they they are in a sense a, a technology company, of course, because they have a very, you know, the core business is like driven by technology, but essentially they are a coaching company. Um, you know, it's, I think in today's world, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's not clear what companies are. For example, WeWork was <clears throat> kind of like <clears throat> a technology. Yeah. Hopefully I'm not getting something right. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think so. Um, so WeWork was kind of like raising money as, as if they were a technology company. Right. But, I know a lot of people in real estate, uh, friends that, that are in the real estate space, they were like, well, it doesn't make sense because it's valued many, many, many times over what a company in their space is valued that has a lot more properties and they own the properties. We work rents the properties. It was worth at some point, I think valued at $50 billion. Um, so they raise money as a technology company, but they're actually a real estate company, right? And That's I think what we're why seeing they now- they got in trouble. <laughs> 
right? And with the markets coming down, right, uh, and all the valuations coming down, uh, I think we're kind of getting closer to reality. When, when when I was saying about better up is, I think obviously they're doing some great work, bringing more coaching to more people. There's, and we'll showcase some of the competitors they have as well. There's a growing landscape of similar companies that are very interesting. Mm -hmm. yes. um, but it's important to kind of recognize that they're really a coaching broker, a coaching company, right? They have their own coaching models and they go and sell that coaching service. I don't necessarily think they're a, a technology company, you know, they have their own technology they use to provide their service, but if I, I would bucket them as kind of like a, a coaching services company. So, um, and I think that's I, not clear to a lot of people in the space yet. Uh, and I get the difference that um, there are many coaches out there that they have their successful coaching practices and they would not want to join um, a platforms right. like um, the ones that we mentioned and they want to integrate their structure and I think there is no other way to measure this um, overrated return on investments which I think more for coaching is return on impact if you don't utilize technological solutions. You have to um, so because the way you track coaching you have to track absolutely. it to measure it. And, absolutely yeah. so and um, yeah, go ahead. So if you want, I can showcase some of the slides and I think you'll kind of start getting into, we'll get some visuals um, to kind of go with. Perfect. The, the I was about to say, let's, let's kick the presentation and see what we have cool. here. So this is a subset of the slides that I've uh, presented uh, a couple different conferences, uh, including the, the conference board in New York. I think I did this keynote about uh, two years ago in 2018. I've also presented this at the ICF chapter in Moscow. I went to Russia. It was kind of fun to have a translator going through. Um, I was, they were translating everything I was saying. It was interesting. I never had that before when you someone like physically next to you translating. Um, so, but this is a presentation that I think is pretty valid kind of for what, what our topic is today. So we'll talk a little bit and briefly kind of quickly um, about three tech enabled coaching trends that are going on in the coaching space right now. The first one is the centralization of coaching. Um, to Vanya's point, to be able to measure impact, you have to first kind of track it, track your different components of the coaching process so that you can get a measurement. Uh, then you have the democratization of coaching, uh, which I used to call it the commoditization of coaching, but I think some people like democratization better. So look, feedback is important, right? So I changed it. And then we'll talk a little bit about AI um, in the context of, of, of coaching, which I think is obviously is, is a very impactful topic just uh, for the world at large. But uh, it's interesting to think about what, what does that mean for coaching? And it doesn't mean we will be replaced because everybody who I mentioned, oh, AI for coaching, and they, oh, we, we're never going to be replaced. And I never talk about that. Actually, there is a much bigger and that benefit of utilizing it and really finding the way to, to build upon. So I don't know that I agree 100%, but I agree with the fact that we shouldn't worry about being replaced by AI because the point where coaches get replaced by AI, the whole landscape of the world is different, right? So I think it's like, uh, yeah. uh, it doesn't make sense to talk about it too much because it's not... It makes more sense to talk about, uh, you know, when, when machine intelligence gets to a point that is beyond human intelligence, that is just a completely different paradigm of existence for humans or whatever we are at that point. Um, that talking about it in the scope of coaching is not that helpful. Uh, but there's a lot of really cool things that AI will enable for real kind of human to human coaching over the next, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years. So maybe that's what we'll focus our attention <laughs> And, and, yeah, and, and, and I actually think that in some areas, AI is more intelligent than humans, even well, up to this day. Well, there's, a, there's an interesting uh, thing uh, um, that I think one of, one of the authors that I really uh, enjoy reading um, his work, uh, Yuval Noah Harari, has made the point that um, intelligence is replacing consciousness in some ways. So when we talk about intelligence, there's so many different lines of intelligence, right? You can be very intelligent in, let's say, kinesthetic intelligence. So you know how to move your body really well. You're an athlete. So that's a start type of intelligence. There's emotional intelligence. There's cognitive intelligence. There's spatial intelligence. So when we talk about intelligence, there's just so many components that go into that. We tend to just say someone 
is intelligent or smart, but they're so, yeah. they can be very smart in so many ways and then they're very not smart in some other ways. So yeah. intelligence is, is interesting. Um, but, you know, AI right now is really good to kind of, you know, play chess and kind of like do um, operations that, uh, you know, that you can teach uh, an AI kind of package or, or, you know, through machine learning, you can kind of learn to operate in it within certain rule, rules and parameters, but it, it's kind of hard to have generalized uh, intelligence like we do through machines today. I think we'll, we'll see kind of where, I think in some of the slides, I kind of have the, the probability or the predictions of when we'll have kind of human level machine intelligence, uh, at which point you can really, really say that AI is like really across the board more intelligent than humans. But, you know, is there a spiritual dimension to that? Can machines be spiritual and connect with that that humans connect with, kind of like the source or whatever you want to call it? Those are interesting questions, but it's easy to get derailed from coaching when you talk about these. <laughs> so in terms of just like the centralization of coaching, which I think it's an important uh, trend that started happening about 15, 20 years ago. I mean, remember, if you got a coach 20 years ago, you, you probably wouldn't advertise it. You'd be like, oh, wow, I'm about to get fired because perhaps I'm like a great salesperson, but I'm a bully. So, you know, they love how I bring the sales, but they might not necessarily love um, how I relate to other people in the company. So they're giving you a coach. And if you don't improve, then you're going to get fired, right? Um, we've gone a long way from that. We've gone a long way from that. So these uh, stages of country maturity, there's a couple different versions of these. Um, my good friend, David Peterson, has uh, a version of these as well that I actually... I haven't gone through these slides in a while, so I think I actually have them on the next slide. Yeah, that was like David's kind of like terms. But um, you can see that the stages of coaching maturity from Jeremy Stover that uh, he used to be at LinkedIn, now he's at Ripple, the cryptocurrency uh, company. Uh, you can see how could you can go from incidental to centralized to metrics-based to strategic to world-class. So we don't have really too much time today to go into the specifics, but you can see that coaching has really transitioned over the last 20 years and there's companies all across the spectrum. When I ask uh, an audience that has a lot of kind of like enterprise coaching practice leaders, they typically are somewhere between centralized and strategic. That's usually kind of what you see today. Um, and then David has like uh, going from kind of like ad hoc coaching to systemic coaching. Uh, really on the right side of the spectrum, what you're looking for is like coaching permeates the way people think about leadership and management in an organization. So we're, no, we're not quite there yet, but uh, it's definitely an interesting context. Um, I'll, sleep, I'll skip through some of these slides because we don't really have we want to make it more of a conversation today, not just a presentation. But, you know, if anyone wants to get the slides, I'll be happy to show them as well. I okay. used to actually, so the centralization of coaching is important because it really is providing the foundation for coaching to evolve in the future, right? So be able to track coaching, what's happening in an organization, how many coaches are working within the firm, um, are people progressing through those coaching engagements, what are they working on? It starts giving you all that content to be able to potentially measure that impact. I actually used to have these network of coaching slide that I made on my iPad, but for our latest uh, investment deck uh, a few months ago, I actually got these kind of professionally done. So we went from the low tech approach of doing it on my, I guess it's kind of high tech since I did it, draw it on my iPad. Um, but then, you know, now we have these version here. So in the context very of this- fancy. Yeah, very fancy. In the concept, in the context of centralizing coaching. So we, from my perspective, you kind of look at it from a technology platform perspective. So there's all these coaching going on in organizations, right? So this is the network of kind of like external coaching. Obviously, in the right hand side, you can see the enterprises that are, you know, some examples of enterprises that are managing coaching practices. They might also have their own internal coaching practice, which they probably use the technology platform to manage. But when you think about what's happening in coaching, um, not only are we centralizing coaching by creating a talent function uh, subcomponent that manages coaching and thinks about coaching strategically in the organization. We also are getting some of the new breed kind of companies like we, you mentioned better up. Uh, there's all sorts of companies popping up. So Ezra, which is a little HH company, which is essentially really the better up model. 
I'd say better up is probably the most well known and they were kind of like first to market first to truly scale that business model. But there's really interesting companies like landed that I think focuses more on kind of women kind of coaching, but I think they probably do all sorts of coaching. But from what I understand, they do kind of women focused coaching, which I, I think is really cool. Uh, they have bravely uh, out of New York that I think they raised uh, 3 million landed raised, I think 13 million better up raised 143 million. So there's really a lot of money flowing into the coaching space which we've never seen before and the promise here is we can provide more coaching to more people which is i think a great thing to strive for then you you have kind of like the traditional kind of global coaching firms on the left hand side and then you find yourselves kind of like in the independent coach kind of quadrant down there on the lower right and then there's a ton of boutique coaching firms and all these firms kind of coexist in these kind of network or landscape of of coaching so the point here is coaching is a network just like i was saying at the beginning why we created coach logics is well when you think about it from a platform perspective you can create tremendous efficiencies by um, distributing data into one platform where you can then analyze it benchmark it and do all sorts of different things so that's kind of like a little bit of without revealing all of our secret sauce and our strategy um, that's really kind of like the vantage point that we have for this space just neutral technology platform to enable uh, more efficient coaching and it, so it plays well with that if, centralization movement mm -hmm. yeah there is a question um from nanor about making clear that coach logics platform is for companies where managers are, use it to coach their employees not only actually but alex you can give more uh information around that yeah, so we work with independent coaches. You can go in, sign up for a free account. Uh, we have plans also for 49 or 99 bucks a month. Coaches can run their coaching practice through Coach Logics. We work with coaching companies, uh, companies like DDI, but we also work with uh, a ton of smaller boutique firms, right? They have five, 10 coaches working together. You can use our tool to manage an entire kind of coaching company. And we also work directly with enterprises. Some of our clients include LinkedIn, Groupon, Grant Thornton, um, some pretty kind of uh, Lockheed Martin, some pretty kind of large scale coaching companies, uh, or, sorry, enterprises. And within those enterprises, they can optionally provide access to the, the managers, the leaders, the executives, any employee that's receiving coaching to be able to have access to the tool. And I'll actually, Vanya asked me to showcase the tool. I'll actually showcase our mobile tool uh, mm -hmm. in a few minutes so you can see what the mobile app looks like. Obviously, we have the administrator platform where if you're running coaching at LinkedIn, you manage all your coaching programs, your vendors, but I'm actually just going to showcase kind of like the coach or coachee experience with a mobile app in a few minutes. Um, hopefully that answers some of that. Um, and Vanya, I'll, I'll keep moving through these slides. Uh, yes, that's yeah. okay. Cool. Yes. Perfect. So one of the concepts, uh, there's a concept called like a, a tech stack. So when you're in a technology company and someone asks you, you know, what's your tech stack? You usually say something like, you know, um, like a lamp, lamp uh, stack, which is, I think, Linux and a whole set of kind of just technology words that you can throw in there in terms of talking about how your technology is built, the stack that you use. Uh, lamp being a very popular one that is just a combination of different technology uh, infrastructures that allow you to kind of create technology, right? So when it comes to coaching, you often, I often ask coaches like, you know, what's your tech stack? And they get super excited to tell me that, well, I use Asana for project management. And then I use Calendly for scheduling sessions and I use QuickBooks and I also use Stripe for payments. So there's all sorts of technology platforms out there that you can use as a coach. And there's some really great platforms out there, one of the problems that you run into sometimes is that you're having, you, your clients are having to use five, six, seven different platforms to work with you. So part of the vision we had is, you know, how do we kind of build a, a core set of features that you can integrate into one platform so that coaches and clients have a fluid kind of way to interface with each other. Uh, combining that with kind of like a, an interesting kind of like integration strategy so that if you're using some tools uh, that work well for you, you can integrate those into your main coaching system. We're actually this year going to be launching a, a lot of integrations through, uh, maybe you guys are familiar with Sapier that allows you to do a lot of really quick integrations, transfer data from one platform to another. We already integrate with all major calendar systems, uh, with Stripe, um, but we're continuing to do that. So when we think about coaching technology from the CoachLogic's perspective is really thinking about how you think about a, 
uh, about technology from a platform really perspective? How do you integrate with other tools? How do you make it easier for coaches, clients, enterprises to be able to manage all the coaching workflows and coaching data in one integrated place? And uh, let's not forget Slack. I love Slack. And there's some really cool things you can do with Slack and coaching. I know some of the kind of emerging coaching technology companies uh, that sell coaching services have some kind of connectivity with Slack so that if you're an employee working for a company, uh, you can actually just kind of kickstart your coaching session from Slack or something like that. So there's some cool nifty things that are popping up. Um, I, I think I'm probably going to go th skip a couple slides um, just because um, of the you know, for time today. And if something looks interesting, let me know and we can stop and talk about it. Uh, that was just kind of like a quick overview of, of the landscape. I think this is important for me just to highlight, oops, because I don't want to just say coach logics, coach logics, coach logics, and not showcase other companies. So there's a, a number of different kind of what a CMS in the context of coaching. It's not a content management system, it's a coaching management system. So there are tools for coaches and there's a number of different options there. There's tools that coaching companies can use. Um, for enterprises, there are a couple options as well. So companies like Insala, Kronos. Then um, there's also software that have been created by coaching companies. So we don't have too much time to get into the specifics, but I wanted to highlight that, you know, Coach Launch is not the only coaching management system. I do think we are the only true coaching platform that works across the spectrum of coaches, coaching companies and enterprises. Um, but there's definitely options out there. So it's good to, to know that. Um, and that's why I always invite different uh, founders of different coaching platforms with um, just to present what is available because everybody needs is are different and, and that's the idea. We, you know what your options are, you know what you where you're standing and you can choose. So thank you for providing this additional information. Definitely. Um, and you know, when you're uh, from a coach perspective, it's good to kind of think about your technology processes. What's your, what does your tech stack look like? What do you do for scheduling, for keeping notes? And like, what does that all look like? It's interesting sometimes just to chart it on a whiteboard or something like that. And you know, we, you might have some extra time now with what's happening in the world today that you might need just like some slow time at home. Maybe you want to just chart all your coaching processes and figure out kind of what are some of the technologies you're using. In some cases, some coaches actually just like add the the, cost, the monthly or annual cost to each one of those instances of their processes and then realize like, wow, I'm spending a lot of money on like different technologies. Some work really well for me, some maybe not as well. So there's always a chance to optimize. <clears throat> so well, well, we definitely move uh, a long way since 2016 because then I run this marketing survey and ask um, 100 coaches what kind of technological solutions they use to keep up their coaching practice and what I found was pretty devastating is like a big percent of them were just taking notes paper notes and using google drive and that's pretty much where it was <laughs> I think I think it's probably still pretty close to that. So it's it's you know there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, you know if if you're trying to create efficiencies for yourself, potentially for your clients as well, it's important to consider that. And also if you work within organizational ecosystems, you're going to be asked to use platforms these days. So our goal is to have Coach Logics be the core platform, so that you're not being asked to use five different platforms, right? Uh, so the more yeah. enterprises we work with, the more coaches and more coaching companies, the more we create this ecosystem that truly creates efficiencies for everyone because you, you know how to manage those processes. Um, we have a question. Can, yes. you, um, uh, can you explain what is free? How, how individual coaches can join your platform for free and what is $49? Definitely. Um, this is a question that I have on my chat box. Definitely. So the free plan for coaches allows you to have up to three active coaching engagements for free. Um, and I think there are some limitations in, in, in some of the functionality, uh, like the branding, for example. I think you can't have branding uh, if you're not on the paid version. And then the $49 version allows you to have branding on your portal. And it also allows you to have up to 10 active clients and then the 99 version dollar version which is the pro uh the pro version allows you to have unlimited engagements and allows you also to get 
email templates that are customized with your branding as well. Um, we're adding a lot of features, so we're going to continue to kind of change the packages and kind of add different things to different uh, layers to the free standard and pro. But those are kind of like the key differentiators um, today. Thank you. And Vanya, you tell me if you want to kind of keep going through some slides, answer some questions, have more of a conversation. You let me know what works for you. I think maybe you can take one, two more slides and then we can pause and take it co more conversational. Cool. So we were talking about the commoditization and coaching and we've kind of mentioned it already. Uh, companies like BetterUp and Pluma and um, Landed and so. So the idea is really to expand the use of coaching across uh, organizational levels. I am sure that some of these will also start kind of appealing uh, to the top of organizations, especially since millennials I'm are going to make more and more um, of a percentage of the composition of kind of um, higher levels of organizations as we continue to go through the next few decades and they're pretty technologically kind of prone. So we'll see kind of like that, let's say better up model probably being more appealing to uh, C-level executives over the next couple decades. Um, it's hard to think in terms of decades with the world shifting so quickly these days, isn't it? Um, Absolutely. But technology can really extend the impact of coaching in organizations. So the idea of, of these democratization of coaching or commoditization is really to make it app-based, change a little bit of the delivery dynamics by making kind of like sh having uh, shorter sessions, uh, having really that digital experience, having content that is aggregated for different goals and making it very data driven. One of the things we're working on this year that's super exciting is the ability to create kind of constellations of content for coaches so that you can actually go and curate certain topics. So for example, you have clients that are working on, let's say, emotional intelligence. A lot of coaches I know kind of curate their own content and have it available for clients depending on what they're working on. So we want to be able to bring these to the coaching management platform. So as a coach, you can create your own library of content that will be able to kind of be delivered to clients when they work on different goals. And this isn't, we're not talking about AI yet in terms of the slides, but since this is more of an informal kind of conversation than a presentation, um, this is where AI, I think, has the most potential impact in their short term. I was about to say that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so be able to, so you can have your curated set of content, but how cool would it be to be able to say, okay, my client's working in emotional intelligence and get a whole constellation of resources, some paid, some free, that would allow you to, as a coach to be able to kind of direct the client in the right, in the right kind of direction with, um, with great content. So that is kind of some of the stuff that we're working on. I can't reveal all the stuff, but like we're actually proactively working on these. And, you know, some companies like Better Ops, a good example, they have their, their own content and they're kind of allowing people to kind of share content, you know, coaches and coaches. Um, so we want to be able to enable that for kind of like the broader population of coaching. So if you're a coach that you're, runs your independent practice, being able to have a, an engine like that, where you can aggregate your own content and bring other content in, perhaps even sell some of your content to other coaches that might be interested. So that's kind of how we're thinking about this. And, and AI, I think it's key. I like the piece of like, uh, imagining because this is powerful too and I would say that one more thing uh, as an opportunity is not in general emotional intelligence but when we know our client in which exact area they're building on let's say in self-awareness then the system can automatically fit the information and in particular um, like tweaks in the behavior around self-awareness um, based on the information that you have on the platform and everything comes automatically um, versus manually customizing. I mean, ultimately you want to change behavior, right? And I think your point is you can actually have technology help you with not only kind of thematically have like a set of resources that are helpful in conjunction with the coaching, but you can actually track some of that behavior change in conjunction with that as well. And build on that because now we are talking about changing even identities, identities in a corporate organizational level and how you do that. Yes, behaviors and habits are part of that, but there are many, many multiple layers around changing the whole identity. So how, how you collect this information and what exactly is 
calculated to come on the surface that will support your dance is the opportunity for the artificial intelligence to kick in. I certainly, certainly agree. And I think, so I, I kind of want to jump into the AI piece just for the purposes of time, but um, yes. you know, there's a really good stuff coming out of these del new delivery models with using technology for these new co breed coaching companies. So I, I'm happy to share my, my, uh, my slides later if, if anyone wants to see it, but there's also some challenges around, you know, uh, you know, low fees, uh, coach burnout, you know, Uber, the Uber model is not necessarily applicable to coaching. So how do you make these models sustainable in the long term? How do you make them work for early stage coaches and advanced uh, coaches that have been doing this for a really long time? So I think there's, for me, this is represents just opportunity. So it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, I'm just going to skip through those slides and let's quickly talk about AI. Um, you know, I think, again, the most powerful component of AI for coaching over the next five to 10 years, I think it's on that content piece. As a coach, you know, when I'm doing coaching and a client asks for content related to an area that I may or may not have a lot of expertise in, it, it always starts the research process, right? Like, well, what's good content for that? Well, it'd be so nice to just automate that. Um, but when you think about what's going to happen with uh, human level machine intelligence, that's what HLM stands for. There's all sorts of things that could impact coaching. So think about it um, from the perspective of actually having like human level machine intelligence. Let's say that by 2050, we have that. The landscape for coaching will be very different. So as we transition to that level of machine intelligence, we'll probably have coach supervisors that are AI driven, that are gonna be kind of super cool, right? Um, to be able to have really smart, feedback that aggregates data from like a lot of different coaching conversations from different coaches of different levels of experience to be able to get a summary of that from like a bot that tells you, Hey, at minute number 32, you missed an opportunity to ask this question. 45% of coaches that ask that question after a similar conversation get better outcomes for their clients. I mean, there's some crazy stuff you're going to be able to do, but uh, there's also, you know, um, a long time before we kind of get to kind of that level of intelligence. But, you know, things happen quickly in terms of technology. So think about what the world will be like in 20 years, probably very different. So um, I think that's kind of like the second layer of impact for AI in coaching. And then ultimately, you know, once you have human level machine intelligence, they call that the singularity where machines become smarter than humans. Let's not even think about coaching in this context. But let's think about coaching in the context of us getting there, because there's a lot of really powerful conversations going on in the world today around uh, technology. Are we using it the right way? Because, you know, technology doesn't, uh, I watched the movie the other day and say, you know, um, I think something around like, you know, uh, technology doesn't kill people, people kill people. So it's how we use technology that's going to allow us to either make the best use of it, or we're going to create this dystopian kind of world that we don't really want to live in. Perhaps coaching in has something to say about what we do with that. People kill technology as well. And, 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 and um, if you resist the process, you're not making it any better. Because um, a question that I usually ask towards the end, but I think now is appropriate is, what do we want to preserve right now in order to build these opportunities better and uh, utilize the technology to serve us, to become better and greater? That's a great question. I think, the so, I think people care about people, right? Like you get into coaching, not because you want to automate these coaching practice with bots and make more money just by doing less work with humans. I mean, a component of that I think is powerful and it's great for coaches to make more money, but I think coaches get into the coaching space to be able to have some real meaningful connections with people and help them become more uh, effective in dealing with the situations that are going on in their life, how would they relate, relate to themselves, and ultimately, I think with organizational context, make people in organizations more effective. Um, but yeah, I think you, you, you draw a pretty interesting question, you know, like what, what is it that we have to retain as technology changes the landscape of the world as coaches to have the human element to be powerful, but also kind of let technology transform some of the way in which we do things, right? I would be curious to see what people on the call are thinking about that yeah, I, I, and, and I, I, post their answers on the chat box. Um, because as I said, I, my intention always is to make it conversational, but it's kind of challenging. People, um, 
just prefer to listen. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, no, but certainly. Let's see what, what if anybody would like to answer, what is that thing that we want to retain and preserve? Which is pretty unique in terms of coaching and human connection. And, you know, while we do that, Banya, too, I, I know you wanted me to showcase the mobile app, so I'm happy to do that and then kind of continue the conversation as we're showcasing that, if you'd like. Fantastic. Yes. Cool. So we have a pretty cool mobile app we launched last year. And I'm going to showcase. Ultimately, we need to preserve connection with others. So how the, the can technology increase the human connection? Well, today with what is happening and we, we always talk about disruption and agility and um, um, disruption, agility and uh, uncertainty. And there is no bigger, more vivid example that we are living right now. And if there are points in our coaching conversations that we are pitching that coaching can help with that in certain times and build agility, I think now we have to show it. And we have to show it. And the way to show it is through connecting with our clients virtually and supporting them with that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting how, you know, in a world of hyper connectivity, we seem to be more distant to each other than we've ever been, right? Uh, and you're seeing it with younger generations. I mean, people are just like completely kind of disengaged in terms of, um, you know, you, you look at people in a restaurant and they're all on their phones and we're hyper connected through technology. Um, but we're not really connecting as humans in the, in the, in this plane. Um, and when, it, but there's also a really interesting component of coaching emerging in the world over the last 20, 30 years. So there's something about the changes in technology and how we're changing the landscape of human existence that kind of brings that need for deeper connection that I think has fueled the growth of, of coaching. Um, and, you know, like anything, right? Like uh, technology emerges and we're completely enamored by all the efficiencies and all the magical things because doing, you know, doing a FaceTime or a Zoom conference like this, it, it, was, ma it was considered something almost kind of magic 30, 40 years ago. Can you imagine? Think, people could not think that they could see each other instantly through video. Now we're so used to that, but we're so enamored by it that it's like absorbing everything else. I think Mark Andreessen, uh, the, one of the founder of, uh, the founder of uh, one of the top kind of Silicon Valley Vista firms says software is eating the world. And it really is. It is eating it up. It's transforming it. But it's so important for people like most of us that really care about the human connection to be able to do this kind of work, connect with people and help people connect with themselves and with other people um, in this world that kind of tends to want to dislocate that human connection, even when we have the most capabilities we've ever had to connect with each other. To it's connect. So, so interesting. And it's the choice that we make how to use what is available. And I think in the next month, we will really learn to truly connect through technology. I, that's my own personal belief. I think you should have invested in Zoom, the stock. I think it's like 60, 70% up this year. So certainly there's something to be said about that, right? And it's one of those mm -hmm. stocks that hasn't really been hit hard with these uh, downturn in, uh, in the market. So it's, uh, that speaks for itself, right? Sometimes you have to let the market speak and yeah, the video conferencing, connecting virtually seems to be in a really interesting juncture and kind of like human existence. So, yeah. and a lot of coaches use Zoom to connect with their clients. And 10 years ago, we would never think of doing, you know, a, a, an executive coaching session through video because that was kind of seemed like sacrilege. But now it's probably more effective and efficient for people to do it. We haven't measured yet. <laughs> we we I, don't have a data on that. <laughs> I'll give you my own personal thinking around this. Is I like to meet clients face to face for the first time, and then I think once you establish that rapport, then I think um, the remote sessions are more impactful in my case. But I don't do 
kind of high volume kind of coaching. I do more curated kind of coaching engagements. So for me, that works. A lot of people, especially when you're democratizing coaching, won't have the luxury of meeting their coach in person. So one of the questions could be like, you know, what do we do to be able to enable strong human connections within the coaching process when the coaching process is virtual? Um, so that's, that's a good question, I think. And I wonder what are some people thinking about that? And awesome. um, we have some comments in the chat box. Let's demo for a minute or so um, the app. You want me to show? Yeah, you know, I know you want yeah, me to show the app. So you can actually do video conferencing sessions right here. So if a session's coming up, you can actually click on the session and enable kind of the video to pop up. You can also do chats. Um, so I wasn't really prepped for demoing this today. So you see a lot of like demo data. I was playing around with David. Um, here, so we're doing some messaging a couple months ago, testing out the app. Uh, you can actually see um, kind of like different coaching relationships. Um, so if I go and look at this relationship with David, I can see the process, right? So I can see we had a coaching session, August 12, 12 2019. You can completely customize these coaching roadmaps. Uh, you do it in the desktop, in the desktop um, application, uh, actually the web application. You can go in, create, all customize your own names, your own processes. You can add sessions, forms, which are essentially surveys, uh, documents, and you can kind of just have these kind of linear process right here. You can uh, schedule, reschedule sessions, uh, connects with your calendar. So really the idea here is to just create efficiencies between coaches and coaches um, to bring everything in one place. No, not through Calendly and all these different tools, just yeah. everything in one place. Uh, you can create goals, share those goals with any stakeholder you'd like, create milestones, set reminders. That reminds me of my app that I developed so much. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, like, um, I, I guess when you think about goals and um, what you can put into an app is a little bit limiting versus uh, the platform that is a software platform. Um, and, uh, computer versus uh, application. So what we tried to do here, uh, balancing kind of like the desktop and the mobile is to do a lot of the interactions between clients and coaches uh, enable through the app, but do a lot of the administrative work of how you set up a coaching program and all that through the web application. Um, and, you know, as, as we continue to invest more in the mobile app, we'll probably have a more robust set of functionality on the mobile app. Um, but, you know, it's just a matter of kind of progressing things you can't really do everything at once but we really thought and worked with a lot of coaches thinking about what is it that coaches want on an app and you know managing notes documents all sorts of things like that kind of came to to mind so we we kind of uh, enable that so you can access documents and do all that kind of good stuff yeah, right potentially here. you can optimize the notifications in certain things and Yep, absolutely. You can yeah. you we can you can get like all sorts of different notifications. One of the cool things about this is it, they actually pop on your phone, right? So if you want to yeah. schedule, reschedule, submit a survey or anything like that, you can just do it right there uh, on your phone with a with a, a, a notification. So yeah, lots lots of things you can do on the app. Um, so yeah, it's a little quick overview, but like it's nice to get a visual when we're talking about uh, kind of like managing a coaching practice. So this is kind of like the mobile enabled view for coach watches. Awesome. It looks very nice, very clean and intuitive. Thank you. I, and I believe that's uh, one of the uh, most important ingredients. Let's see what we have in the chat box so we don't uh, miss anything. Uh, around my question about what we want to preserve and uh, what's important, uh, Jen Hansen said a coach's intuition and compassion can be replaced yet. Um, I it, agree. Not yet, not yet and not in the future, but can be um, um, <laughs> the empathy, at, at least what I know that um, the piece with empathy, the, uh, the robot and algorithm can play around like playing with empathetic questions and comments around that, that pretends, can pretend <laughs> the I, empathy, but not really feel it. It, it. I think it's a matter of scale in terms of timeline, right? So, and, and also definitional kind of philosophical approaches to it. So I'd, I'd think about what, where empathy comes from. And I agree a hundred percent. I don't think technology can replace human connection and empathy. 
but also when you think about the fact that we are built on top of chemicals that turned into you know atoms that evolved to be molecules that evolved to be multicellular organisms that human empathy has a backbone that is kind of like biotechnology right it's like the, the biological world the, the physical world can turn into the biological world turned into these mental space so we are in a way not that different to computers in terms of how we are wired we're wired through kind of biological evolution and engineering um, but when you think about computers and their capabilities I think that's where a lot of people in the coaching space maybe don't really necessarily like to think about these things but I those things it's not about calling them replaceable but it's really about understanding that the technological capabilities that we can enable over the next century are mind-boggling. So it's, it's not really about thinking whether coaches will be replaced or not, because again, the world will change so much and talking just about, about the changes in the sphere of coaching perhaps is not really super productive. But if you wanna think about it from a philosophical perspective is can machines have empathy? The answer is probably yes. So because of just where empathy comes from in humans. Um, we still don't have uh, computers that are as advanced as the human brain, not even close. But at the pace of innovation and the reality uh, that exists, th we will get to a point where we do that. And it will be interesting to see what the conversations are broadly in society and what type of society we live in when we have computers with those kind of capabilities. Uh, will the robots be kind of second tier citizens or will we become second tier citizens? Uh, Yuval Noah Harari in his book, uh, I think it's Homo Deus in that book, he really explores the idea of you know, how we treat animals. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people don't treat them equally as they do humans. Some people treat them better <laughs> than other humans. Um, but it's interesting to think about what will happen when the artificial intelligence layer is, is built upon humanity and whether the people that have access to kind of buy tools to be able to implant on their bodies will be considered kind of superior than those than are just humans without those modifications. This, the world might turn very interesting in the next century, but uh, I think what's important for us now is to continue to build human connections and make the right decisions as to how we deal with technology so that we create a world that technology is improving in a way without really eroding the beautiful thing that is the human connection that I think we all love in this audience um, because we're all coaches, right? And actually you answer my, one of my questions again in advance, um, where, where are we hitting and what are the opportunities with uh, technology and partnering with technology? And um, again, it's important to open up our minds of what we are teaching and showing to our clients and, and be, um, and just learn, just learn and, and contribute. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's my uh, bottom line here in, in this and every conversation that I have of um, technology and coaching. We are running out of time, so we won't be able to take um, other uh, questions. The, you can read it through the comments. There's some for you, Alex. But um, awesome. thank you for everyone who showed up today and thank you uh, for uh, Alex and uh, ICF Orange County for giving me the opportunity to, to serve the community and um, I'm looking forward for the next 20, 30 years and see what's going to happen. Um, make sure you sign up for my next uh, coaching and technology webinar in May where I will have Tom. I forgot his last name, but we will talk around uh, coach bots for team coaching. Um, that sounds fun. Very interesting. So just um, tune in. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Banya and Alex. Um, gosh, my mind is going crazy. <laughs> and, you know, I think we mentioned on the webinar that we could have access to your slides, Alex, if we wanted. What would we do if we wanted to go about getting those? I'll send them over to Vanya and okay. um, I'm sure she can kickstart the process. Um, After you fill out the survey for today, you will receive the video session, access to the video recording, and we will send you as well um, the slides. 
Cool. Perfect. And I'll include all the slides, not only the one slide I presented today, just like that entire kind of set of slides. I'll, I'll, I'll so yeah, because I was seeing you you go by some of those slides fast. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I want to see what's on that slide. Yeah, no, I'll send you uh, everything. All right. Yeah, fascinating stuff. Thank you so much. As Vanya says, she has a whole series with us this year with about four sessions over the course on coaching and technology. Alex, I'm so glad that you were able to be with us today. I think this is so interesting. And um, it, it's stuff we need to be talking how we use the technology is going to make quite a bit of difference. So for our ICF constituents, um, as you know, because of the virus, we had to cancel our physical gathering, which would have been scheduled for this Thursday in a couple of days, but we are going to be having a virtual meeting on Zoom, and we're going to have an opportunity to practice um, social connection over a technology platform this Thursday. Uh, we're not going to be doing it webinar style. We're actually going to be doing it meeting style, which will allow us to all converse. So it's going to be a really interesting experiment. I think it's going to be wonderful for all of us and an opportunity for all of us to connect. So please join us on Thursday for our virtual chapter meeting. Thank you again, Vanya, for putting on this coaching technology series. And thank you so much, Alex, for being with us today. Pleasure. Bye -bye, thank everyone. you, everyone. And connect with us on LinkedIn. Alex Pascal and Vanya Kunz, find us. I would love if you have any questions, just send a message and uh, we can keep the conversation going. I'm planning a, a survey research like for a white paper potentially on uh, what is coming up for coaching and the future of coaching, which um, I would love contributions from all of you. I would love to see that Vanya. And so what we might want to do when we send our email out to everybody is have your LinkedIn um, there too, so that we can add on. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.